What did I tell you I'd do? If I found your sheep grazing another man's land? I think the full civilizing influence of a uniform code of law has not quite reached its useful level. In uh, the Montana of 1923, at least, is not in this neighborhood. There's a little rough justice involved here. I think it's because it has been a necessity for him to redress grievances uh, by himself. The Dutton's version of frontier justice is judge, jury, and executioner. It's, it's pretty fast. And Jacob, at this point, believes that a swift act of violence will make his point. He hopes that there will be survivors to tell the story so that people won't try it again. There was no coming back from that for Banner. To go through that, the trauma, that's a very significant turning point in terms of what he was prepared to do and where he was prepared to go. But there's something about having a rope around your neck and the horse leaving, which was actually really scary. But I felt safe. They're a great stunt team and they put a lot of work into making us feel really secure. But I was just enjoying being beaten up by Harrison. The costume design for Banner is very interesting because the sheepers, they have wool. So the wives are knitting them all of these rough woolen jackets. Everything's itchy. They're very uncomfortable. A baggier silhouette, burnt tones is much more textural, creating all those different contrasts from the world of the cowboys. I warned you, Banner. The intensity of the scene is magnified by not only the script, but the weather. We're already crunched behind because we were held for lightning and the location. We don't have cell phone service, we're up there. It is, for the character, not a terrible moral dilemma. It's what he knows. For us to consider his behavior, it may be hard to understand, but in context and in the time, it's still a little difficult to understand, but there's that side of the man, and then there's a very respectful and warm relationship with his wife that I think is redeeming. One of the reasons I was attracted to playing the character is it's a character I've not played before, and I'm interested in his internal thought process and his behavior. You're rude. Us Americans are renowned for our lack of manners. True. He doesn't particularly like being approached by anybody. And in that space, I mean, he's just coming off the heels of Kigiso being killed and everything with Holland. And he's wounded physically and emotionally. And the way he knows how to process that best is just by drinking. And she's interrupted that. Alexandra is British royalty. She comes from a very posh upbringing. She lost her brother in the war. So I think she feels a real sense of legacy for her family. But she has this spark and adventurousness inside of her and wants more and wants to break out of that. You're a hunter. Initially, he doesn't want anything to do with her. He's like, who's this annoying girl talking to me right now? She has this kind of romantic view of what it is that he does. She thinks it's cool. And to him, there's nothing cool about it. And it's not until he really allows himself to look at her when he says, dying, dying is the most alive I'll ever feel. feel. She's never had anyone speak to her that way and be so brutally honest about the world. It's instantly like that. That's what I want. That's the moment they fall in love with each other. It's the first time they truly look at each other and really take the other person in. From pretty much meeting one another, we have had a very special connection and we always joke with Taylor that it's crazy to us that he didn't have his chemistry read because we just do have such a natural chemistry with one another. I'm afraid all my adventures are over. That's a shame. I agree. <laughs> It was amazing to create like this very fancy world of Alexandra's formal gowns, tailcoats, that pastel world of Africa and summertime too. So it's very hot and creating like all the dresses for her friends. I love the idea of all of the girls kind of like being in their different pastels and Alexandra, she's in this beautiful pale pink dress that I loved. Just very flirty and feminine and fresh. She built us the most beautiful costumes of all time, especially Alexandra, and it just puts you right there in 1923, and to feel tightened up, it does feel stifling sometimes, which is how Alexandra feels, and then her journey and breaking down her costume and getting more relaxed, it's so helpful as an actor. Her costume is a little bit more sporty than her friends that are just loving their life as British royalty. I designed all the pieces for her, except for her Hermes scarf. 
I love the contrast of Spencer's costume. We built all of his clothing down to his boots. This is one of my favorite costume pieces that I designed for him, which is the four pocket hunting jacket. I do love the Countess's costume, just all of the details of her coat and many layers of pearls. We've brought this old manor building to life. I believe it was built in the early 1900s. It was an old school. We've brought in a lot of greens. We've brought in a lot of vehicles because it is a valet parking area situation. But when you're talking about vehicles that are over 100 years old, there's always challenges. We've had a little bit of stress already this morning with the rolls. I'm the one who loves you. She, at the end of the day, accepts that there's more out there. There's adventure and there's love and the universe puts it right in front of her and she's like, oh, that's what I want. That's what I can have. And she has to make a choice and I think she's so brave. Speaking in Crow is not ideal because the motto is kill the Indian, save the man. They want to strip you of your identity. That's what they've always wanted. And truthfully, it still happens today. Speaking in Crow isn't my language, but I think about 90% of my dialogue is in Crow. It is very important for us to remember and come back to our language. Tiona's story, it's so harsh. The color palette is very depressing. It's very gray and grim. All of those kids were in the same thing, day in, day out. They were really dressed almost like military style without being in the military. If you speak that filth in my school again, I will bury you alive. Tiona has been so defiant in the best way that they don't want her influencing anyone else. And it finally leads up to Tiona being put in the hot box. They do whatever they can that they think will work to kill the Indian in her. Ugh, I hate that. The little porter potty looking thing, which was a very long walk from the school. It's about half a mile. At that point, she's sweating. She's hasn't eaten in about two days, hasn't drinking any water in the hot box. It's really brutal on her. But I think that time in the hot box also gave her a moment to like be unbothered because every single day she's bothered and she's tried. I think it gave her clarity and a space to actually figure out how this is gonna work and how she's gonna get out.